All right, just going over uh, party organization at this point. Um, parties are basically organized, and, and really, unless you're working on the state or national level, pretty much everybody who works for a political party is probably a volunteer. Um, I mean, overwhelming majority of them. I mean, I've, I've known people who work for a political party just by like filling out postcards and mailing them to potential voters in swing states. I know somebody doing that in Durham right now. Their goal is to send like 2,500 postcards to registered voters in Tampa, Florida, trying to sway the election in that state. Um, they might be making cold phone calls to registered voters uh, or trying to just get people to register to vote, to try to get encourage them to come and join the party and vote. Um, they could even be doing little things like um, try to encourage uh, or even try to give people rides to the polls. Parties will do that. They'll give you a ride to the polls if you need it. Um, and so precincts and wards are where you, uh, basically your precincts is where you vote. Um, a ward is like the next level up. And then that, um, and so usually you just have a ward captain who kind of oversees the precincts and tries to get people out, out to vote in each wing. Um, and really the local level is where that's where all your volunteers are. I mean, your and your local elections really matter a lot. I mean, your local elections could determine, like, do the roads get fixed? What's the school situation going to look like? Do we return to school? Do we have to wear masks if we go to school? Um, those sort of things really add up and matter. I mean, this could matter, like, um, are we going to have more restaurants open downtown? Are we going to approve more liquor licenses for restaurants downtown once you're of age and can worry about that sort of stuff? Um I mean, uh, what's going to be like, who's going to be the local sheriff? What's their deployment strategy is going to be like? How are they going to respond to potential issues? Um, that sort of thing matters and is determined on the local level. Um, now, on the state and national level, see, hide that. Um, the state and national level is where we tend to put all our attention, which is a little bit backwards in the way the founders intended. I know one time in the live class or if you were in person class, I sometimes like to ask, like, hey, who's the mayor of Cary? Um, who's the county commissioner? Who's your state legislator representatives? But we can all tell you who the president is. We can tell you national level people who are running for president. Um, so I don't know, in my opinion, the Republicans at least are winning out on the whole logo game on the national level. Um, but the party goals tend to kind of come from the top down. And um, so, you know, here in Wake County, North Carolina, we're not worried about um, about building a wall on the local level. That would be a national level sort of thing. What we may be worried about is, say, if the party is talking about law and order. Um, law and order certainly matters everywhere. So that's something that um, pretty much all conservatives, like right now, as I record this, Dan Forrest is running for governor. And I've seen some of his billboards saying jobs, not mobs. Um, the Republican Party is branding itself as the law and order. And that's something that comes from the top. Uh, Trump has said he wants law and order in the country. Um so, so that's the sort of thing you might uh, see going on here, uh, whereas goals at the national level kind of work their way down. Um, each party writes a platform every year, uh, or every four years, rather, at the national convention is where it's developed. Um, and the party platform is meant to be, I mean, it's like a hundred and some odd page long document for both parties that discusses where they stand on right now. For instance, the big things are the environment, COVID. Uh, our response to COVID, the economy, employment, um, economic relief for those who've uh, had their jobs impacted by COVID. Um, those are the big picture things that we're worried about here on the national level. Um, and that's uh, developed here. So now, can, now these they have a couple of different jobs. Uh, basically, parties, political parties want to control as much of the government as they can. Um, they want to control state legislature so they can draw party maps uh, for the country so they can try to con um, then move on to control the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, they want to control the legislature and the executive for the state and the national level to get laws passed. Um, and they want those laws to reflect the values and the, uh, of, what their con of what their party wants. And they want that to hopefully then uh, lead to bettering our nation. Hopefully. Um, so parties select candidates. Now, what we saw back in, uh, and, and we'll see this term later on the PowerPoint, back when we had primary election season, back when we saw like Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, I'm um, using Democratic examples because they're the recent ones, um, Joe Biden, uh, Bernie Sanders, let's see, who else was there? Um, uh, shoot, lots of names just slipped me. Elizabeth Warren was running. Um, that was, that was us selecting candidates. Now, we also do that on a local level. And honestly, on a local level, 
you may not face a lot of opposition if you said you want to be on the town council so, or the school board. Um, but you're probably going to spend millions of dollars if you want to be president of the United States or even governor or even senator for our state. Um, now, patronage is a system where you reward people for uh, working for the party. Now, I will give you a story. I had a professor who was uh, very conservative, and he was from Chicago, which is, as you may know, a very liberal city. And he was um, he was a volunteer on a local level in Chicago for many years. This kind of tied a whole unit together a little bit. Uh, but he was a local volunteer in Chicago, and he got assigned this neighborhood, and it was an awful neighborhood, he said, filled with Democrats, very, very hardcore liberal neighborhood. And when he started going door to door and introducing himself as being from the Grand Old Party and wanted to talk to you about what this place looked like um, or, or what the election would look like, then um, he was literally getting cursed out, getting doors slammed in his face. So he started trying to figure out what to do about this. Now, what he ends up doing is um, looking at the precinct and ward maps. And he also goes back and starts looking at party demographics. And he discovers on a street corner is a nursing home. And it is primarily a Polish Catholic nursing home. Now, he knew his demographics um, as, uh, as a good political volunteer would. And he knew that they were most likely conservative. And he started, uh, he spent all of his time that he was assigned to volunteer and work in this neighborhood by the party to just focus on that nursing home. And what they did not know, maybe you didn't notice either, but um, you can register to vote with a nursing home as your address if you're a permanent resident. And not only that, but the party's willing to give you a ride to the polls. Um, so he spent the next, I don't know what time it was. I think he said it was like a month, two months leading up to the 30 days that you had to be registered prior to the election. He spent all this time just shaking hands in a nursing home, getting people registered to vote. And he begged the Republican Party of Chicago to give him a van to drive people back and forth um, on Election Day. They didn't want to give it to him. They, they, they said the whole thing is just a crap shot. You know, use it to get some experience. He begged and begged. He got the van. He spent all he spent the week leading up to the election coordinating with the nurses, and he got them to give him a uh, uh, to get the schedule and get everybody in that nursing home to the polls and get them to vote. And he came within five points of winning district and scared the living daylights and crap out of all the Democrats in Chicago at that time. Um, now, what it ultimately led to, it was not a win, but it got him promoted to another candidate later on who approached him and said, hey, saw the work you did. I want you to come work with me. We got a chance over here in this precinct. And he ends up helping that guy win. Now, to tie it back to patronage, is that when he won this job, he said, um, what, what part of his pay? He said, even though I'm a volunteer, you know, I just got out of college a few years ago. I could use a job. And he said, no problem. I'll make sure you get a job. Well, he won. He got his job. Now, the courtesy was six months to a year in, you quit. But he said he never even had a job title. He, but he went down to the, um, the Cook County uh, in Chicago Municipal Building once a month, collected a check, walked through the office, never even knew what his job title was. Nine months later, 10 months later, whatever it was, he walked in, collected his check, handed in a letter of resignation, never went back. And that was it. Um, but that was uh, the way he kind of got paid back for his efforts in a more corrupt system. Um, now, political parties have a goal where one of the things they are going to do is um, they have things they're going to do. And we're going to talk about this, but they help people get elected and they keep you aware of what they want to do. You know, they're out here telling you, hey, if you elect Trump, he's going to destroy the environment. And then Trump is telling you, if you elect Biden, Biden's going to destroy the economy. You know, um, that's their way of trying to tell you what they want to do. Right. And what the other guy's going to do. Uh, we talked about grassroots movement before a long time ago. I won't go over it again. Um, watchdogs. Now, parties are good watchdogs. And maybe what I said a moment ago is a better example of watchdog. But another thing might be, um, as I record this, um, Cal Cunningham was caught having an affair. And then there's uh, some stuff going on with like National Guard duty and such that may uh, come down with this. So that's actually the party's playing watchdog. They're showing you the corruption, the hypocrisy uh, of the other side. And then on the same time, I'm seeing Cal Cunningham running all these ads about Tom Tillis about how corrupt he is. And like there's a radio ad that there's some company that was like they were encouraging their, their employees to donate to Tom Tillis. And then the company was giving the money back. And that's actually a felony. Um, but that's them calling each other out. And what that theoretically does, I mean, what it results in is what it looks like just an awful and trash government 
of full of corrupt and lying people. But theoretically, what it's actually doing is keeping our government better and more honest, because I would know, hopefully, if I'm a politician, that if I accept bribes and I have affairs and I lie to my constituency, see, I'm going to get called out and hopefully people have enough moral sense to get rid of me for that. Um, they also give us a, a way of identifying someone. So even though you might not have a clue who Sherry Berry is, if you see an R beside her name, you know kind of what she's about. And you know if you elect her as your Secretary of Labor, what she's going to be like. Um, and a lot of times on local levels, people don't really know what party their politicians belong to. But, uh, or they don't even know their names or what they believe on a personal level. But if you know their political party, you can kind of gather some things. Um, we do see a little bit less... Um, I don't know how well this is going to go, but I mean, this is the way the textbook was written 10, 15 years ago, is that there was less party loyalty. You were starting to see more people not want to identify as a Democrat or Republican, more people wanting to be. Uh, and we are seeing in America more and more people registering independent when they go to vote. Um, actually, straight ticket is not even an option on a North Carolina ballot anymore, but less and less people are starting to vote that way and starting to kind of cross party lines in voting. And we'll leave it there for the